Hello! This is again Alexis from Tailored Moto TV and this time I'm back with another episode to discuss what I call the slot death problem. Uh, in the last video I talked about slotless motors. I couldn't still not find data that shows me that they are really doable, that they really work. So maybe it makes sense to just follow the masses. I mean, because most motors are slotted, there there is certainly a good reason about this. So I went more into detail how does slotted motors are designed, and I found out a very interesting problem you always have when you design a motor. That's how deep do you make the slots? Here I made two examples, two extreme examples of motors. They are supposed to have the same outer diameter. So, and if we have the same outer diameter, we have a big difference in rotor diameter. Now, if we have a larger rotor, a higher rotor, a bigger rotor diameter, we have a bigger radius where the force, the magnetic force applies, so we get more torque, right? But if we have a smaller rotor, we have more space for the copper. If we have more space for the copper, we can add more turns. And as soon as we add more turns, uh, we get a higher force. We get the bigger force with the smaller radius. So that's the first dilemma we get. And if we don't have enough space for the copper, I mean, we could go take a smaller wire, a thinner wire, but then of course the resistance increases and then we start generating ohmic losses. So that's basically in, in a nutshell the problem we have. What adds up to this problem is <clears throat> the width of that teeth, uh, of course we want to make that tooth as thin as possible. We want to make that tooth as thin as, thin as possible so we have more space for the copper. But we can't go too thin because at some point we get into the saturation of the iron. And so probably the, and I'm also not sure what, what's the influence of the length. Probably the longer you make your coil, you will also have to make it a little bit wider to, to avoid saturation. I mean, the saturation problem is also something that appears here at the, the tips of, of the tooth, but that's uh, not important at the moment. Suppose that this part of the tooth is the same in both cases. So, if you want to go more efficient, you'll probably go toward a motor that has rather long teeth. So you have lots of space for copper and you ha can use uh, a rather thick wire for a given amount of turns. And then you have a motor that for a smooth, for a constant operation over a long time, makes you um, makes you an efficient run. If, if you want to have high peak torque but you have a rather low torque uh, in average, this design is more suitable because you can overload the coils for a few seconds, even for half a minute. So you could overload this coil and get nearly the same force than you have here with a w much longer, much larger radius and so you get more peak torque out of this one but at this moment where you want the peak torque, peak torque you, will, uh, you will lose efficiency. So that's what I found out. It's a rather short video this time. I'm very happy if you have some inputs, some comments about this. Uh, and it shows me again that I definitely have to dive 
into magnetic simulation into FEM. Maybe I find someone to help me or maybe I just have to do it myself. Thank you for watching and goodbye.